With the success of Dino Crisis 1, it was no surprise that it got a sequel. Usually with their sequels, Capcom kept the gameplay really similar to the original game, much like they did with Resident Evil 2. But with Dino Crisis 2, that really wasn't the case. Whilst Dino Crisis 1 was very much a survival horror game, the sequel was much more action focused. And it was interesting to see because you don't really see this kind of radical change in a sequel anymore. Capcom have obviously got a reputation now for making their games more action based, but with Dino Crisis they went for it straight away, maybe to test the waters for the later Resident Evil games, who knows. But did it work? Well let's find out. Released just one year after the original, Dino Crisis 2 made some huge changes and improvements which is massively impressive when you consider the short amount of time it was made in. Dino Crisis 2 kicks off with returning protagonist Regina, a newcomer. Dylan. They are tasked with going to an island that disappeared due to time distortion experiments and rescue the 1300 survivors and collect the data of the experiments. Obviously it goes quickly tits up and Regina and Dylan are separated from the group when a horde of raptors attack. And immediately the action starts. You know all those raptors that made you shit your pants in Dino Crisis? Well, now she chance to get revenge on the cunts by running through the forest and annihilating them with a massive fucking shotgun and it's glorious. You can wield two weapons at once, one main weapon and one secondary weapon so you could have a shotgun and a machete for quick melee attacks when you knock a raptor down. Also you can shoot and run at the same time as well as being able to sidestep so it gets rid of the shitty controls of most survival horror games. Whilst it's satisfying to try and make dinosaurs extinct again, the variety of enemies in this game will try their best to make sure that you don't. Most of the dinos come in packs and from off screen, which might seem a bit cheap to some, but you have an auto target on your side, which is meant to target the enemy closest to you. But sometimes it doesn't target the one you want, which can be an annoyance. It gets an even bigger pain when you fight flying enemies and the few underwater sections in the game, and manual aiming at these enemies is just too slow. You'll swap between Regina and- Dylan throughout the game instead of picking one at the start. Both of them have their strengths and weaknesses but in the early game you'll be going through the same environment you went through as the other character which can great. Whilst I didn't think this game suited the survival horror label much I thought it definitely suited the survival panic label that Capcom gave the first game. More so than the first you're under a pretty much constant barrage of enemies and the fast pace keeps the adrenaline pumping. You also don't have limited inventory like survival horror games so this removes the hassle of inventory management. Management. There's also some really nice sound design touches to add to the atmosphere as well, such as the bushes rustling before raptors come jumping out. Puzzles also make the return, but not as complex or difficult as the first game. A massive change comes though in the way weapons, ammo and health are handled. Instead of picking up ammo and weapons in the environment, you purchase them from shops located at the game's save points. Some items can be picked up from the environment, such as health packs and keys. You earn the game's currency by killing dinosaurs, you get extra points for combos and finishing areas without taking damage, so you can end up ignoring your objective and hunting dinosaurs to amass an arsenal. Whilst this can take away some of the immediacy from the game's objectives, it's nonetheless fun to try and beat your own high scores, and you're rewarded for doing so. Dino Crisis 2 is also a much prettier game than the original. Environments are pre-rendered, giving them a more realistic look, and there's a wider variety of places to explore. All the dinosaurs animate fluidly, and they have their own roars and sounds. They also have their own behaviours giving a personality to each species of dinosaur. Plot wise the game starts off simple enough but like most Capcom games it goes eight ways batshit towards the end. There's a weird plot twist involving but it should keep you entertained throughout the game but really who plays these games for the plots? Overall, Dino Crisis 2 is definitely worth your time. If you're not into survival horror games, Dino Crisis 2 will probably be ideal for you. Even if you are into the genre, it's still worth it, because let's face it, survival horror games never really evolved on the PS1, and Dino Crisis 2 is the exception to that. So there you have it, Dino Crisis 2 was and still is a pretty good game. And then, Dino Crisis 3 happened. Dylan!